So we need to kill this fucker. Pink. <laughs> I might die here. Um, Alright. I've been at this an hour. And I've done nothing. At least it's easy to edit. Highlight. Delete. There's no easy, easy. Paris. She's coming. Who? Well, you've been naughty. God damn dumb. it. Anyone but her. Aren't you a luscious thing? Jesus Christ, Alistair. Just who in the nine hells are you? Well, you absolute stinker. You kept me a secret. Hmm. Time to let the Hellcat out of the bag. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. Oh. We had a deal, Will. <clears throat> but Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora. And at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. Beef? You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupsters found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. Is she a fucking lawyer? <laughs> Get to the point, devil. What do you want? The point? Oh, yes. Thanks for the reminder. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. Hey, did you do something with your hair? Subsection A, stop what the hells have you done? A promise broken, a price paid. You know the terms. Get used to the new form, pet. There's no going back. Some magic even I can't undo. Now, let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade. Karlak, keep an eye on him, would you? I'll be keeping mine. On you. On me? Oh, and Will. Don't forget. Our pact still stands. Ta-ta. What are you talking to me for? What do you say fuck me for? <laughs> He's just standing there like, uh, I feel like I'm after intruding on something. Oh, God. I feel like I should talk to Will first. Where is he? What are you doing? I don't want to talk to you. God's damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. I mean... You just have horns. Is it naive of me to say that... Like... <laughs> that doesn't seem too fucking bad. It's not, yeah, it's not the worst thing in the fucking world. I think he looks cooler. She's a devil, hardly the paragon of honesty. All these years. You'd think it's a lesson I'd have well learned. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, Every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. I actually, I've never had him in combat, so I presumed he was just like a, a sword dude. I didn't know he was a warlock. How did you get involved with your own? Ah, the one little question that put me out of house and home. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact, 
I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this, the moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. Oh, you've decided that we're done. Okay. You reading? Did you see what fucking happened over there? <laughs> Asterion looks over and goes back to his book. That's what it feels like. He's just like, oh. I really don't want to fucking talk to him. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him. Uh, do I have something that he can eat? So I might let him eat the staff of Crohn's. If he needs it, needs it. What's on your mind? Apart from finding me an artifact to consume, which I assume you're pursuing with the appropriate urgency. He makes it so easy for me to tell him to fuck off. Could do. That is most gratifying to hear. May I? He can't eat the staff of crones. Oh, I don't really want dancing lights. I don't think that's... Fuck it. Thank you. It hasn't been every rest so far, but the amount that he's needed has been ramping up. So I worry that it will become <laughs> Good every God. rest. It hardly has any effect. Oh, Mister, have mercy on us all. Gail, you Listen, need to I sort need to yourself speak out. To, you, to all of you, it would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. Oh, do I have to fucking listen to him talk. You're among friends. Can we leave that part out? Just go on then. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The lady of mysteries. The goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse. And later, even my lover. The chap made it sound like he was fucking dying. And all he's told me so far is, you know, I used to be fucking class. I was actually a child prodigy. Um, I found this incredible magical person and she fucked me, actually. I actually, I fucked her. Did you know that? Like, get on with it. I don't believe a word of what you're saying. I kind of don't. You tell me you made love to a goddess. Alistair. Lazelle's the only goddess you need. Relax. Oh, yes. We enjoy uh, each other's uh, company. Oh, I didn't like that. Oh. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. It was like the and Churchill death. Every time oh, yes. I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. Don't cross boundaries. Okay, consent is important. You thought you knew better than Mistra. You are more fool than I thought. Quite. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, and yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? I wasn't even listening. What is he talking about? We come now to the crux of my folly. Should I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to- I don't give a fuck, actually. We can go over that later, straight to the sword. Suffice it to say, I obtained an obscure and ancient book that had locked away inside a much coveted prize. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time. Locked away from Mistra herself. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess. I was 
was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. Why do you have to kneel down for me to do that? Why don't I get the option to say no, actually? That's more important. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in. Don't let me in. Dark. I've seen this before. The book, the black tendrils of chaos weave that lash out and overtake you. The dread is as real as the first time. The oppression just as unbearable. How are you still alive? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. It does feel a little bit romantic, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like my hand on his chest as we're both like, Oh, God. Oh, I'm so impressed with your ability to stay alive with this hungry hole in you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I will erupt. Oh, God. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, and it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. By rights, I should kill you. I can't stop loving you. Is there nothing we can do? We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. If we were to part ways, where would you go? Once I'd step out of the protective aura of the artifact, it wouldn't be long before the Absolute overtakes me. I'd never let that happen, so I'd aim for a swift end. I would consume some midnight tears and venture as deep into the Underdark as I possibly could. Till they cloud my eyes forever. With a bit of luck, I've managed to make it to a mind flare colony, so that when the orb erupts, one loud last song of vengeance would reverberate through the dark. Wouldn't be a heroic end, but coarsely poetic enough in its justice. 